Good evening and welcome to the Cathedral of the Assumption. Please stand and let us join together in singing our opening hymn, We Glory in the Cross. My dear friends in Christ, as we enter into this liturgy, our Lenten season is concluded, and we enter into these three days, the Paschal Triduum, 
as we draw near to our Lord Jesus Christ and journey with him through his passion, death, and resurrection. Tonight, we open a liturgy that will conclude after the Easter Vigil for these three days is one prolonged liturgy, remembering the Lord's passion and celebrating his resurrection. Tonight, we celebrate the gift of the Eucharist and the priesthood, two sacraments instituted by Christ at the Last Supper. The Lord desires to encounter us in word and sacrament. Let us therefore go forth to prayerfully meet him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins and more worthily enter into these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what, what I have done, done and in what, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O 
O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ.
blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Okay. 
Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper, took off his outer garment. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever is bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew that he would, who would betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garment back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, on this sacred night, our Lenten observance is completed, and we have begun our journey through the most holy days of the entire liturgical year. For three days, our ordinary and daily time, in a sense, is paused. For we now enter into sacred time time which belongs to God, time which is consecrated by him. In these three days of sacred time, we do not merely remember what happened to our Lord some 2,000 years ago. In these three days, we experience for ourselves the Lord's saving work of redemption. In our first reading tonight from the book of Exodus, we recall the pilgrimage of Israel through the Exodus. The name Exodus means movement. The Exodus was Israel's holy exit from the chains of slavery and oppression. They walked into freedom and ultimately their entry into the land promised to them by God. Passover, for our Jewish brothers and sisters, is a real experience of that one event in history. Passover is their participation and their reliving of Israel's moment of freedom. Recall how Moses, moved by God's command, petitioned Pharaoh to let his people go. After several attempts at trying to convince Pharaoh to free the children of Israel, it was only after the final plague when the angel of death struck down the firstborn that Pharaoh was finally convinced. 
The Passover meal, which we heard in our first reading, was at its core a celebration of God's liberating power. Blood that was taken from the slain lambs served as a shield to protect the homes of the children of Israel on that first Passover. The angel of death passed over the places marked by the blood of the lamb. On that night, the paschal lamb, the blood of the paschal lamb, was truly a remedy for the firstborn of Israel, saving their lives from the angel of death. In the depths of God's mysterious plan, the blood of a lamb brought both freedom and death, anguish and joy, conversion and movement. Every successive Passover is a real participation in the one-time event of that first Passover. The movement of Israel in the Exodus was relived and experienced anew when families gathered every spring to celebrate the feast of Passover. Now, the book of Exodus reminds us that God commands the fathers of their families to introduce the Passover meal by saying to their children, quote, this is what the Lord did for me. This is what the Lord did for me. And even today, that phrase is used. Notice that the father of the family does not say, this is what the Lord did for our ancestors. No, he says, this is what the Lord did did for me. For our Jewish brothers and sisters, there is no difference in time and space between the time of that first Passover and the Passovers that followed. The subsequent celebrations of Passover are no less authentic or real than that first Passover. They were all experiences of God's power and his love for Israel. In this way, generation after generation also could experience Israel's movement from darkness to glory, from despair to hope, from captivity to freedom. It was all and is all encapsulated in sacred time. The celebration of Passover was no different for the 12 apostles on that night that began the Lord's passion. These men filled with the seeds of faith, yet unaware of the mysteries that were to unfold, and still yet having to be inflamed with the Holy Spirit, they gathered with the Lord Jesus to celebrate the Passover. In an intimate meal of love, the Lord Jesus shared the final moments before his passion and glory with his closest friends. This was Jesus's exodus. It was his departure, his journey, his pilgrimage. Jesus Christ moved beyond time and space, crossing not the waters of the Red Sea, but instead crossing from life to death, crossing from this world to the next. Entering into sacred time, the apostles knew the significance of the Passover meal and its meaning in the history of Israel and the lives of the people. But for this 
Passover. Christ himself is the Paschal Lamb. Christ himself gives his own blood to the apostles. Christ himself gives his own flesh as their bread. It is the blood of Christ that brings freedom. Freedom not from the chains of Pharaoh's oppression, but freedom from the chains that bind God's people in slavery to sin. Christ's blood is not a remedy against the angel of death, but the seal of the new and eternal covenant. God's final promise to his people of victory over death, a victory and a freedom that will remain forever. On this most sacred night, Christ journeys from the temporal and the earthly to the transcendent and the heavenly. Jesus has brought fulfillment and new meaning to the ancient Paschal meal of Israel, their Passover. He has ratified this covenant, this new covenant, in his own precious blood. We are marked by the blood of the Lamb and thereby can know freedom from sin and death. My dear friends in Christ, on this holy and sacred night, we gather to enter into that mystery, that first meal that is the Last Supper. The Eucharist we celebrate is not merely a memorial of times past. The Eucharist is our participation, our experience, our union with the events of salvation history that occurred 2,000 years ago. Nevertheless, tonight, in this sacred time, they unfold before our eyes in our day as we experience them anew. Yes, in this liturgy, ordinary time gives way to sacred time. In the first Eucharistic prayer, which most of us know as the longest one, nonetheless, in the first Eucharistic prayer, which we pray throughout the year, the text of that prayer always reminds us of the saving event of Christ's institution of the Eucharist. Throughout the year, the first Eucharistic prayer reads, and I quote, on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, end quote. And the prayer continues. But tonight, marking this sacred time, marking the fact that we join ourselves to that last supper that Jesus had with his apostles, the church in the first Eucharistic prayer adapts the words of that prayer only on this night. And it reads, and I quote, on the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. End quote. It reminds us that tonight we experience with the apostles the institution of the Holy Eucharist. We too feel their wonder, their joy, and even their amazement at the miracle that Christ performs, changing ordinary bread and wine into his very real flesh and blood. Unlike all other masses which we celebrate throughout the liturgical year, as I said at the beginning, Tonight's liturgy does not conclude 
until Holy Saturday night. This liturgy, which began tonight, lasts for three days. At the end of this Mass, there will be no dismissal, there will be no go in peace. Instead, at Jesus' command, we will be called to stay and keep watch. Watch and pray with him in his presence. In tomorrow's liturgy of Good Friday, there is no opening, no conclusion. There is no sign of the cross to begin the liturgy, no let us pray before the opening prayer. There is no blessing or dismissal to send us forth. It is a continuation of what we begin here tonight. All of this culminates in the great Easter vigil, the mother of all vigils, in which we experience the joy of the empty tomb, which brings our salvation and the salvation of all. It is with the end of the Easter vigil that this liturgy concludes. But tonight, tonight is a reminder, dear friends, that the Lord earnestly desires to be a part of your life and my life. The Lord desires to be the center of our lives. The Lord desires to be our daily bread. Every time that the Eucharist is celebrated, Christ journeys from the eternal to the temporal and from the heavenly to the earthly. Jesus makes the infinite pilgrimage finite as he joins heaven to this very altar. Tonight, Christ moves into our lives uniquely and in a special way. After Holy Communion, we will process with him in the Blessed Sacrament through this church to the altar of repose where we will wait with him, keeping vigil with him before his passion. What the followers of Jesus longed for, just to be close to him. We have been given in abundance in his real presence in the Eucharist. Jesus will give himself to us totally in Holy Communion then he will draw near to us in the Eucharistic procession. He will invite us to join him in the garden in Gethsemane, to remain with him, to watch and pray. Tomorrow, once again, Christ will appear in our midst as the Eucharist is brought to this altar in the same manner which his cross will be brought forward for veneration. And on Holy Saturday, the light of Christ too will be brought forward, shattering the darkness of sin and death. Tonight we begin this sacred time, this time that demands that we notice that things are different as we see Jesus' humility, his love, and his service on display for us tonight. He washed his disciples' feet to share with them the kind of Messiah he was and what he was calling them to undertake. He gave them his body and blood. This is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out for you. He gives it not only to the apostles, for in this sacred time, Jesus gives himself to you and to me as well. This is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out for you. May we who participate in this liturgy, in this sacred time, 
be more willing at all times to do the same for one another. Amen.
in this time of the Lord's passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to his Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his Son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also. That the Church, the Bride of Christ, may be more fully cleansed by his blood in this time of his passion, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That through the blood of Christ's cross, all things in the world may be brought to peace for the sake of salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may grant fortitude and patience to all who through sickness or hardship have a share in Christ's passion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all be led through the Lord's passion and cross to the glory of his resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask they may obtain by the merits of your son's passion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake. And in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all <coughs> things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ 
handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for all, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, 
graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lord. 
look to you, O Lord, and you feed them in due season. Lord, you open wide your hand, giving bountiful food and drink. The
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 